What is going on, Governor She's School here, and today we're bringing you a video all about Alexander the Great. If you like Commander Guides, you should like and subscribe, because we have guides for literally every single Commander, and we are a sponsor creator. With Rise of Kingdoms, my friends, when we do a commander guide, there's four things we talk about. First, the skills, then the talents, and how you unlock. Lastly, the pairings, and the pairings is probably my favorite part. Let's get right into it. The first skill on Alexander the Great is Shieldy. Alexander the Great puts up a shield on himself with a damage factor of 1,200 for four seconds, and at the same time puts up a second smaller shield for the nearby friendly army with the lowest percentage of troops remaining, healing factor max of 600 for two seconds. This means that Alexander the Great is a portable shield generator. Sign me up for that. That's freaking sweet. The next skill is is a freaking mortal strike. Who let in the World of Warcraft developers? While An Alexander the Great's troops are on the map, they are immune to all damage reduction effects, which is pretty sweet. Damage reduction effects, I think, refers to... Um, let's see here. Hannibal Barca, right? That is a damage reduction effect. I don't know if that also means that it's immune to the attack reduction. I think it's just damage reduction, though. Anyways, back to Alexander. When you're on the map, you're immune to all damage reduction effects, and all regular attacks have a 10% chance to deal, and it's up, uh, yeah, 10% chance to deal, uh, a damage factor of 1,700, which is nothing to sneeze at. That's just straight better than El Cid. Uh, and there's a healing effect reduction of 30%. That's insane. That's insane. If you compare to El Cid's second skill, it's just so much better. Like, why? What is happening right now? Anyways, let's continue on. Third skill. 30% infantry, march speed, and 30% infantry attack. Wow. 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 This commander is speedy as heck, throws out some shields, portable freaking shield generator, and makes it so that your opponent can't heal. This is all very, very good. The next skill makes it so that your attack is increased by 40% when your shield is not active. When a shield is active, instead, you don't get the 40% attack, you get 30% defense. Freaking outstanding. Love everything that's happening here with this commander, and it only gets better. And it only gets better. By the way, did they rearrange the order of these skills? Like, the icons changed, right? Like, this used to be a baby with its soul getting sucked out which is not the case anymore. It's a shield effect. That looks like it's appropriate. Whereas now this is the baby with its soul getting sucked out. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't know. The little details. When you get a shield that goes up, increase the damage taken by nearby enemies up to three targets uh, by 30% for four seconds. That's freaking insane. Wow, wow, freaking wow. This commander is doing everything I want a commander to do in the open field. And, honestly, should they be leading rallies? It's possible. We're going to have to go get a look at the talents to figure that out. They've got the infantry tree, the attack tree, and the versatility tree, which whoop, 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 does next to nothing. But let's go get a look at the actual talents here. The versatility tree we're not in love with because it does a bunch of nothing, so it all means you get no value. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's talk about the one and only single build that I think is appropriate for this commander. And there is only one build, my opinion. Go to the top of the infantry tree, getting elite soldiers, grab fleet of foot and strong a body because freaking value, am I right? And who doesn't like march speed? From there, definitely go get effortless. Along the way, you're getting some march speed, which is pretty freaking sweet. And also, Lord of War and Burning Blood, which are tremendous value talents. With your remaining points, I'd like to get armor joints. And if there are enough in here, get martial mastery. You're probably not doing skill attacks with this commander, so uh, if you get a pairing where neither commander is doing skill attacks, then martial mastery is some pretty sweet value, assuming there's any points left over. The one and only build <laughs> to put onto freaking Alexander the Great. Not even all that much to talk about. It's very straightforward. 
do the one build. The reason you're not going and getting victory charge and last stand is because, first of all, they're not doing huge amounts of damage, so the chances that you're, like, defeating lots of armies out on the battlefield is pretty gosh darn low. And, um... You really want the active skills here to be going off very, very frequently. Like, you don't you don't really want to have something that gets in the way of your active skill going off and, like, increasing your damage. This isn't a commander that's about doing lots of damage. It's about showing up and doing shielding. So, anyways, I just don't think the attack tree, the top talents here, make a lot of sense. Victory Charge is the one I was referring to earlier about defeating armies. Um, the one and only build for Alexander the Great. Okay. Now let's talk about how you unlock this commander, because, my friends, it's really only available, it's really only available on the wheel. This commander is only available on the Wheel of Fortune, and it's kind of awesome that they actually have an icon for that in here now. And after you've unlocked it, you can use your Universal Sculptures, so if you want this commander, you should save up some gems for it, but <laughs> if you're in a young kingdom, you've got a long way to go, because this commander hit... Only the oldest of kingdoms very, very recently. So uh, you can get this commander from the wheel, and when they show up, you probably want to unlock them. At least unlock them so that later you've got the option to further invest, because they're freaking sweet. Now your favorite part and mine, the pairings. And believe it or not, one of the absolute best pairings is Yi Song Ye. I know, right? Mind blown. I wouldn't have expected this, except, I mean, you saw my previous video, I'm pretty sure I sequenced it this way, where I did a 1v1 with what I thought was the strongest army in the game, Khan and Cao Cao, battling into Alexander the Great primary with Yi Song Ye secondary, and Alexander the Great second with primary with Yi Song Ye secondary, it won. How? How did it win? I don't understand it. You've got a huge amount of damage. Coming from Yi Song Ye, no synergy at all with Destiny. No Archer synergy at all. I mean, like, I don't get it, but it works. Here you have some rage generation. Like, I don't know. Wouldn't wouldn't a commander like Tao Tao be better as a secondary, potentially? I don't know. Doesn't matter. The point is, yeah, um, Alexander the Great is doing work, doing serious work. So apparently Yi Song Ye is a pairing. I wouldn't have expected it. If Yi Song Ye is a pairing, um, I guess Cao Cao is not a pairing because you're not going to bring cavalry. You're still going to bring infantry. So forget I mentioned Cao Cao. He's a no-go. Richard I, freaking sweet. Freaking sweet. You've got now super mobile healing, shielding, whew, doing it all, debuffing, craziness. Um, what I'll point out is that this debuff reduces damage dealt, which should stack with the debuff from Alexander the Great, which is increasing damage taken. Solid, solid, solid combo. Minamoto is a commander that I think would be interesting to try instead of Yi Song Ye. You lose the rage generation, um, but you get some extra attack, and um, you can boost your damage, higher damage factor overall. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. I'm not entirely sure. I can't figure out why Alexander the Great with Yi Song Ye works, so all I know is that it does. Charles Martel is a freaking sweet commander to pair with Alexander the Great. You've basically got the fastest commander pairing in the game with, what, 50% march speed boost? Yeah, you are hoofing it. I honestly want to see that in action. That just seems crazy good. That just seems crazy good. Pair these commanders up and go freaking faster than the cavalry because these infantry have got freaking wings on their boots. Next up, Hannibal Barca. Don't do it. Doesn't make any sense. Next up, Genghis Khan. Don't do it. You have to have cavalry. Doesn't make any sense. I suppose you could use, you could use Alexander the Great as the secondary to Khan. And, like, that could be kind of interesting because it's, like, shield, 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 shield. There's some anti-synergy here with uh, skill tree talents, but, like, jeez, it could be quite good, honestly. It could be quite good. Um, yeah, I think that actually could be a pairing. Freddy. Now, Freddy, you can pair these two up and feel really good about that. You bring more troops. You get healing. You get big, big damage. I mean, like, normally you want Freddy to be paired with a commander that, um, I don't know, 
uh, is going to do more synergy, offer more synergy. So like Yi Song Ye is a commander that offers a lot of synergy with a 50% increase to the active skill and the rage generation and the skill tree. But for instance, if you did Freddy primary, Alexander the Great secondary, you would have a very, very fast, super hard hitting, super strong shielding army combination. I don't know. I think it's decent. I wouldn't discount it. El Cid, I don't think is a pairing here. Um, it's, uh, yeah, no, just, you're losing all the value of this skill. I just don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's amazing. Up next, Ethelflaed, um, you really want to bring full infantry. I would not, I would not bring this commander as a pairing. Saladin, um, you really want full infantry. Like, I like that the support tree is going to generate lots of rage, and that's all really good. But like, nah, I don't see it. Um, Julius Caesar's kind of an interesting idea. You could pair these two up, and I think that would be totally fine, honestly. You'd have to decide if you'd rather have the leadership tree or you'd rather have the uh, infantry tree. Probably you'd rather have an infantry tree. I don't know. I think it's fine, but not amazing. You could do it and test it out. Let me know how it goes. Um, Mehmed the second, you could use this pairing, but really Mehmed's all about hitting cities, and I don't know if you're hitting cities with Mehmed and Alexander the Great. This is not a pairing I would focus on, uh, in part because this commander is increasing skill damage, and like, you're not doing any skill damage. Constantine, however, now that's the jam, baby. That's the freaking jam. This is a pairing that I think is just totally gangbuster. Um, you are reducing the damage of friendly armies that they're taking. You are reducing the attack of an enemy. Your infantry are going to be pretty freaking hardy. Um, I mean, like, what, 40% health over here and 30% attack over here and defense over here? Uh, yeah, that seems really good. And they get a huge, huge heal. I believe the way this works is it triggers once per hour that you've left your city, but if you go back to your city, it'll then trigger again if you leave your city. So, um, I don't know. Seems really, really good. Uh, the expertise skill here is a little lackluster for the pairing uh, because you have only one troop type, and this is really all about having a mixed army, but whatever. Um, these two paired together would be really, really sweet. Hugely supportive army on the battlefield. The final legendary pairing we'll get a look at is Charlemagne, and honestly, I think if you brought full infantry and rallied with Alexander the Great primary and Charlemagne secondary, it could be a thing. It could definitely be a thing. Um, I guess, I don't know. I mean, for the same reason that Yi Ye is a good commander with Alexander the Great, if you were rallying, like, I hate to say, like, maybe rallying a city? I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused. But I think this could be a pairing. I think it's worth testing. I don't have the answer, but I think it could actually be decent. Is this a commander I'm investing in? No. Is this a commander I would recommend most people invest in? No. So, I don't know. Don't sweat it. There's lots of other great choices. Heading down to the epic pairings. Do not pair with Kusunoki. He cares about archers. You could, I guess, pair with CPO. And this would be a very, very tanky army. It's actually a deceptively reasonable pairing. Um, yeah, I don't hate it, actually. I honestly don't hate it. I also don't hate pairing with Boudica. She generates rage, reduces attack. Um, she does healing. Mighty fine pairing. Uh, Pelagius doesn't make sense. He cares about cavalry. Uh, Lohar doesn't make sense because we're talking about battling other players. So, no, don't use Lohar. But Lasarius cares about cavalry. Don't do this pairing, but do this pairing. Sun Tzu, yes. Reducing the damage taken, giving infantry even more tankiness, uh, generating more rage, which means you're like shielding like crazy. Yeah, I mean, this is a sweet pairing. This is a sweet pairing. Use this commander with Alexander the Great, and freaking, it seems great. You could use Osman, but I don't think it's incredible. Osman cares all about crazy uh, rage generation, which you would get if you were pairing with Khan, but not with Alexander the Great. Bybars cares about cavalry, do not pair. Herman cares about infantry, or sorry, um, archers, do not pair. Joan of Arc is an interesting pairing, however. Joan of Arc's a fascinating pairing. Uh, if what you want to have is a super fast, buffy, and debuffing army, then Joan of Arc is the secondary to your Alexander the Great seems freaking outstanding. You could flip the order, and I almost would prefer Joan of Arc as the primary with your Alexander the Great as the secondary. Seems quite strong. Uh, also quite strong at the epic pairing uh, is Ulti Mundok. He's an infantry commander. 
A++ as a pairing. My friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video talking all about Alexander the Great. He's deceptively good. He needs to be explored. Right now, he has been elevated on my legendary tier list, which is bit.ly slash ROK toolkit. Link will be in the description if you want to check it out. Um, ROK and the T and toolkit all have to be capitalized for that to work. Uh, the legendary tier list, and I'll have a card up in the top for the video, uh, talks about where commanders are really, really exceptional. And I have moved Alexander the Great to S+, the very, very best for open field combat. In my opinion, he takes the title, moving Khan out of that position. Now, Khan is, in my opinion, the most important commander to watch for breaking other commanders that enter into the game. So he's still my number one best long-term investment pick. However, Alexander the Great takes the, the pick, really, for being the number one commander to watch and test with right now. Test with other commanders right now and see what else is broken, because if Yi Song Ye, Alexander the Great, works, then what else out there is really, really strong? My friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Let me down below. Let me know down below uh, what other pairings are you considering. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.